Welcome to the Autosportradio.com 2022 show. I'm your host, Don Kay, and we are doing this today from the uh, town of Speedway's new building in a meeting room that they've been kind enough to let us to use. And Autosport is presented by Honda and Honda HPD, the SVRA. And if you haven't checked on SVRA lately, you need to look into them. Tony Perella, the owner, is also now owns the Trans Am series, and he owns the Formula 4 series. They're doing a lot of things, so go to svra.com and see it, what they're doing. They're really growing like by leaps and bounds. We're also presented by Speedway, or, uh, McGilvery's in Speedway, as well as VP Insurance, located at 5004 West 16th Street in Speedway. Get a hold of Mike Pardee if it's time to renew your insurance and see what he can do for you. You'd be, probably be surprised, like most of us have, you get better coverage for less money. He's located at 5004 West 16th Street in Speedway. You give him a call, tell him what you need, he'll tell you what he can do for you. Number is 317-248-0070. And if you've ever wondered, what's it like to drive an Indy car? Well, you can find out what it's like to ride in one. You go to the Indy Racing Experience and take a ride for, in the two-seater. You'll see what it's like and you'll be surprised at the speeds. But you'll think you're going 250 miles an hour and you're going 190. Go to IndyRacingExperience.com, find a date that'll work for you, and sign up for it. And in the promo box, put Don K, and you get a 50% discount. Upcoming, starting January the 21st through the 30th, it's the 100th anniversary of the Indianapolis Home Show. It's scheduled for the 21st to the 30th at the Indiana State Fairgrounds. It's a family-oriented event that will focus on all aspects of home remodeling, decorating, cooking, and hundreds of exhibitors to gather the newest and most innovative ideas for your life and your home. Special features will include the Fisher Homes. They were returning to build their centerpiece home, uh, HGTV star Mina Starsack Hawk, as well as the um, Home Idea Center by Davis Homes. You can get discount tickets, $2 off, by going to the Home Show website, indianapolishomeshow.com, and the tickets are courtesy of the Central Indiana Chevy dealers, or you can visit an Indian, Indiana Members Credit Union and purchase tickets for $4 discount off the box office ticket price, or you can go to participating Central Indiana Ace Hardware stores and pick up a $4 discount ticket off the box office price. It's a great event, it's been going on, this will be the 100th year, and if you're building a home or looking at remodeling or redecorating, you want new furniture, they've got it for you, so be sure and stop in. And today I want to mention, I'd forgotten to mention that uh, if you made a New Year's resolution to get your teeth taken care of, I know the perfect dentist for you to go to, and I guarantee you'll love them. The Indy Dental Group with uh, Indy 500 veteran Dr. Jack Miller and his wife Dr. Liz Lewis, spectacular practice. If you haven't had your teeth checked or you need some work, give them a call, make an appointment. Number is 317-846-6125. That's the Indy Dental Group, Dr. Jack Miller and Dr. Liz Lewis. My guest today is somebody that a lot of people are excited to, uh, to, to see and hear, but they've got excitement because he's got a full-time ride, and I'm talking with Connor Daly. And Connor, when you talk to a driver and say, uh, how are things going? I'm working on it. Well, you have been working on it. Uh, you you are your own salesman. Yeah, I mean, honestly, there's no other way to describe it other than, you know, I, I, I don't get to drive unless, you know, I make it happen. So, um, you know, the gone are the days. You know, for me, back in 2016, 2017, you know, I wasn't necessarily hunting for sponsors as much uh, because I was kind of riding this high wave of momentum. But when you fall off that horse, there's only one way to stay in the series, and that's making it happen yourself. So, uh, I, I've been given a lot of incredible opportunities by great teams to substitute for drivers. You know what I mean? I, I've driven for you know three teams in a year, substituting for people that were injured or or, or gone, and that's kind of kept me relevant, thankfully. Um, but yeah, it's 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 been you know a great four years uh, with the Air Force. That's been an awesome partner of ours. But uh, sometimes things come to an end. Uh, there's a you know a changing of administration which means changing of budgets and you know dealing with directly with the government is tough I and mean, it's either it's either yes or no black or white there's no there's no emotional um, you know connectivity involved at all if it's if it's working for them and the and the budget is right it'll be good and if not if there's a budget cut well sometimes things have to get cut sometimes so we thankfully found another incredible partner um, by far the largest you know partner that I've ever had in my career by a long way 
Um, and, uh, and yeah, I mean, we're, we're incredibly excited for the future. Really. Well, your new partner is uh, BitNile, mm -hmm. and they are into all kinds of things. But it has afforded you the opportunity now, and I think you've got a three-year contract. Two. Two-year contract yep. for a full season. Now, you don't have to go from one team to another road street, an oval course. Uh, how long did it get you to put this BitNile together, and what is BitNile? They're into a lot of things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, honestly, it was only about just over a month. Uh, the mm -hmm. first meeting I had with them was on my birthday weekend in Las Vegas, December 18th. So we had basically everything was... All hope was lost, essentially. We had all of our meetings with, with folks that we were hoping were going to be involved uh, were kind of dwindling down. The support numbers were kind of dwindling down. Uh, and Ed, I know, obviously, you know, Ed had to speak to a, a multitude of different drivers um, because realistically, you know, he's got to keep the doors open himself. And there's, there's a certain budget that is needed for that car, the 20 car, the road and street course seat as it was. But there was always a number that if we happened to hit that, I could take over that seat full time. And, and thankfully, um, you know, honestly, I, I appreciate what Ed was was willing to do because Ed, Ed always said, look, if, if we can find this budget number and we can get to this, you know, I'd be happy to, you know, allow you to run the 20 car full time, which is obviously a big step because he still loves racing. The guy's still very competitive, obviously, especially at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Um, so, you know, we kind of basically – through a hail mary um, at um, at this meeting with my with Todd Alt, who's uh, who's at basically the head of this whole operation, Bitnile Alt uh, Alt Incorporated, uh, Bitnile Holdings. I mean, there's on the Bitnile website, Bitnile.com. Very very simple to go to. If you go to their holdings page, you can see kind of a lot of where they're involved in. Um, but Bitnile itself is a is a Bitcoin uh, mining company. So they have a large facility in in Michigan. Uh, where they mine Bitcoin, which obviously is a pretty new technology for a lot of different people. It's a new understanding for people. Some people are just not familiar with it because they don't know. And I honestly am still learning myself. Um, but it's a very, very incredibly specialized system of supercomputers, essentially, um, mining Bitcoin. And there's only a certain amount, obviously, that can be mined. Uh, and it's, it's an exciting venture for them because realistically, it's like mining for gold but uh, in, the, in the new world, essentially. So it's, uh, there's also you know, some incredible partners that, that Todd has also brought involved, like Turn On Green, Ernity, Alzheimer Neuro, which is, you know, there's, a, there's a company that they're working on uh, developing a, a, a drug or a vaccine for, uh, for Alzheimer's. Uh, there's a company called Turn On Green that is uh, you know, a lot of electronic charging stations for vehicles, for other stuff like that. Uh, and then Ernity, which is a, essentially a a social app that has to do with cryptocurrency again, but uh, sort of like a, hey, if Connor has 50 grand in Bitcoin, you can see what I'm doing with it, where it's going, how it's doing. If I felt like investing in any other different cryptocurrencies, you could see that, see kind of how I'm playing things on the, the crypto market. Uh, it's kind of a cool social take on, uh, on the crypto market. And Ernity is, is, is a very, again, brand new, uh, they're launching it all this year. This is a big move for them. Todd has always loved the Indy 500 and a lot of his folks that are involved. John Stewart is a guy who helped put this deal together as well. Uh, all of these people love the Indy 500. They've been going for years. They didn't really know that I needed the sponsorship. And this deal kind of came up and we shook hands on it in Vegas that night in December 18th in, in Las Vegas. And it took, you know, another month and a bit to, to get it all, you know, contractually signed on the dotted line. Um, but, uh, you know, the fact that he wanted to commit for multiple years is something I've never had. And I haven't been full time for one team since 2017. So it's, it's a very, very rewarding feeling for sure. And awesome for the team. I mean, anytime you can dump uh, a great budget on top of a team, I mean, that's, that helps everyone, keeps everyone employed and it keeps us able to do the development. Hopefully that, that will help our cars go faster. Now you'll have enough <clears throat> to do all the testing that's available. You have every day funding for that. Mm hmm uh, is Ed going to continue running ovals? I mean, I, that's up to him. I, I, I don't know. I mean, he'll definitely be obviously be at the Indy 500. There's, there's, they always run three cars there. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it's up to him what he wants to do. I mean, there's, I'm sure, an opportunity where I see him. You know, if, if everyone, if all of our cars make it through the Indy 500 with no crash damage, I could see him taking one of those cars and running it at the short ovals. But it also depends on the people. I think right now there are so many Indy cars hard to find the right people for it. And, and that's, that's the hard part. You obviously have guys that have set the month of May away and are able to take off from their normal jobs, you'd say, to be able to come and help us out. 
for the Indy 500. And our, our third car group for, for Ed Carpenter is an awesome group. But again, they're doing other stuff too. And, and there's a reason why they're not full-time IndyCar guys because they've got other stuff going on in their lives. So it also depends on, you know, if he's comfortable getting, getting the right group together for, for his, his deal, then he can, he can do whatever he wants. He, he's the boss. <laughs> That's true. Um, I find it interesting that, uh, that, that you have worked so hard on getting sponsors and had, where you think uh, it kind of backs away, but you never quit because this is, as you say, a different world today where back in my early days, uh, drivers didn't have to look for sponsors. In fact, I remember talking to Al Unser Jr. one day and he said, I, I think I'm going to have to, you know, start to thinking about retiring. I said, why is that? He said, I've got to do stuff I've never done before. I said, yeah. what's that? Go out and find sponsors. He said, I yeah. don't know how. I haven't done it. So the whole, whole thing has changed. But I have heard that hiring crews right now is very difficult because there's more teams, which requires more people. It's hard, plus they're going to have trouble uh, pit in some of the tracks because there's more cars in that pit area. So, Yeah, I mean, honestly, right now, it's, it's I mean, the people are so important, right? And and it's it's hard because you really have to work hard on these IndyCar teams. I mean, there's, there's a lot, I mean, there's a lot of hours, a lot of long days at the racetrack. I mean, all the preparation. I mean, think of who you're going up against, right? You're going up against the Penske's, the Ganassi's, the Andretti's. I mean, the, the super teams with, with hundreds of employees and you know, for us, there's 39, 40 people employed at Ed Carpenter Racing. But again, all those people are very good people. But if you're trying to add, it's like, how do you bring in the same level of people, right? It's very tough. And if you give, you know, new young guys a shot, are they willing to put in the effort right now? You know, it's, it's something that is very, very difficult. And I think everyone, everyone is dealing with that right now. Because then again, you've also got Indy Lights teams who want to try to get the experienced guys down to help their young guys. And uh, there's definitely... A lot of factors that contribute to it, but I, I I think we've got an incredible group of people, and I do hope that there are more young people out there, right, that say, hey, look, there's a need for young athletic individuals who are ready to work hard, and I, I'm sure they'll, you know, we'll find, find, you know, everyone will find the right people in the end. It's interesting. Now, how much, uh, as most of your fans know, but fans that watch this and say, oh, yeah, Connor Daly, you led the most laps last year how much did that help you when you introduced yourself to a company i mean honestly it's 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 not a trophy that you get it's not a result obviously but um i mean part of the reason why i got this deal done is because of that moment for sure i think a lot of what happened a lot of what we've been selling a lot of what we've you know what people are excited about was that moment for sure and was the fact that we were out there um you know in a dominant position which was quite nice so that definitely played a massive role, and um, you know, it just goes to show you, I think any moment, obviously it didn't end up the way we wanted. You want to win the race, but you got to realize that every moment in a race can be important. Any moment where you get out front can be important. It could, it could catch the right person's eye. It could do the right thing for, you know, for your future, and realistically, if I boil it down to one moment, there's only one reason I have a job for now and the next two years is because of the Indy 500 last year. What was it like when you took the lead and realized you were leading the race. What did it feel like after, you know, you've been around this sport almost all your life. Your dad was a well-known driver, very accomplished driver. Now you're following along and all of a sudden you're leading the Indianapolis 500. What was that like? I mean, I can compartmentalize things pretty quickly. I mean, for us, when you get out, out front, there's, there's a feeling of um, kind of peace because you're just, there's nothing else in front of you. And, and leading at Indy, is, uh, is much easier than not leading. So it's, uh, it's a much better position to be in. You feel like you're in, in more in control. It gives us the opportunity to kind of lead the strategy game uh, and control kind of how the rest of the pack is, is um, you know, is, is basically the speed of the rest of the pack. And honestly, a lot of the time we didn't want to lead, but no one else would pass us. So we would, you know, we kind of were forced to lead for a while. I was hoping it would be more of a back and forth type scenario, but um, sometimes that's the way it works out. And, um, and yeah, I mean, it's, it, it doesn't, it doesn't, you don't feel anything until you see the reaction towards it and what happened at the end of the race. Um, that's, that's kind of when it really more set in like, oh, that was pretty cool. And, um, yeah, at the moment, like everyone asked what it felt like. I was like, I don't know. I just passed the car in front of me. That's what you're supposed to do. I feel like that's what we've always been taught in motorsport is you got to be in the lead. <laughs> How much did that leading those laps build your confidence going forward? I mean, I've been very confident at Indy, honestly, since the Andretti ride in 2019. I mean, that was another race where we spent most of the time at the front and going to the front top five, you know, finishing in the top 10, I think was 
honestly, uh, it, it was not where we should have finished. Like, we should have finished either third or fourth. Now, I still, you know, you ask Michael Andretti, he probably says, well, we should have finished third that day. And, um, you know, that, that's something that we're like, I think that's a track where I have the most confidence at because I've got more laps there than anywhere else in my career, for sure. Um, and, you know, even the 2020 race, which I don't really count as a race almost because it was such a shame to, have to be racing with no fans. Yeah. But it, it was, again, a, a race where, I, I, I like one of those events that like every driver I'm sure at Indy has something where it's like, I have no idea why that happened or what that's like, you just randomly, you know, stuff happens in racing and it sucks. But this, this whole month of May, the last whole month of May, I was just, as soon as we were on track, I was confident. The car was good. I knew the car was fast. And when you have a fast car and you know it day one, it's, it's, it's really, really confidence inspiring. And even though we, I, I messed up in qualifying a little bit, it didn't really matter to me. Cause I was like, it doesn't, the race is the only thing that matters. And thankfully we were able to execute when it came to, you know, came to race time. How, how important is, is your relationship with an engineer? Can he tell from what you tell him what the car's doing and it matches on the computer, what he sees? Yeah. I mean, for sure. Everything is, everything is about your relationship with your engineer. I think it's, you know, me and Pete, who's my engineer now, uh, you know, is, have, have developed a good relationship. I think he knows what I want. Um, and, you know, obviously at the Indy 500, I was working with a new engineer who hadn't race engineered a car yet before. So even with him, um, you know, we were, Vinny was able to give me exactly what I needed. Uh, but all the ECR cars were fast last year. So it's all about basically fine tuning when you have a good overall package. Um, but yeah, it's, it's important to see everything that's on the computer. It's important to be able to understand what I'm saying at a high level and, and, and deliver the right change right then and there, because, in the end, there's a lot of practice at Indy, but it goes away really quickly. So you want to make sure you do all the things you can possibly do. Now, you drove <clears throat> for Ed the last couple of years, street and road courses, and he drove the ovals. Now you're full time. Is, is there a track other than the fi uh, speedway that you enjoy, be it street, road, or or another no another another oval? I mean, all the ovals for me are the best. I, I think we need six more ovals on the schedule at least. Uh, I mean, I, I, I that's the IndyCar racing that I grew up loving. Um, I, and I think Ed would agree, obviously, uh, Ed's an oval guy, loves racing on ovals. I love racing at Texas. I wish we could race it, uh, Kentucky, Las Vegas, Richmond. I mean, you name it. Uh, so many, so many different tracks. Um, and you know what? I don't know if it'll happen in my era of IndyCar, but I, I certainly hope so eventually. Um, but yeah, it, the ovals are, you know, are something that again, I have not been to now with Ed Carpenter racing at the other tracks. Let's say Iowa. Let's say Gateway, Texas. I've not driven their car at those tracks, so that'll be kind of a new, you know, a new uh, approach for me. I know what I like at those tracks because I've been there with Carlin the last <laughs> few years, and you know, we finished sixth at Texas with Carlin. We finished sixth at Gateway with Carlin. We've been on the pole at Iowa with Carlin. So, like, I've been strong at all those oval races. So, I hope to be able to at least communicate what I like in the car to them pretty quick because, thankfully, we do have a test at Texas before the race, which is, uh, you know, which is quite helpful. I, I, I think I remember uh, Roger has indicated that he would like to have add some ovals to the series. Now, what that means as far as what he would take away, I don't know, or would he add? Because I know he doesn't want to go much over 18, 19, as far as what I've been told. Yeah, we need 20 races. <laughs> I, I agree. I think, I think that would be great. Of course, the problem, as you mentioned earlier about crews, they're the ones that have to do all the work. They're the yeah. ones that are, and when they run that many races, they're gone a lot. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but I mean, when, it, when you put things in perspective, Formula One does 26 or 23 races all across the world. Right. And NASCAR does 38 races. I mean, that's, I know it's a lot of work, but like, we're still the least, we still have the least amount of races of any professional motor racing series. So I think I, we have the ability, I believe, to do it. I, I obviously don't know what it takes to, you know, get there. I think there's a lot more work, obviously. Then, yeah. then, then I can put into perspective, and I, I, I definitely just think that we have time in the schedule. We have one race in February, one race in March, and one race in April, and you know we have five in July. So it's you know how, how do we how do we put at least another one in April, at least another one in in March, um, because I'd like to have the build up to the Indy 500 even more. You know what I mean? Have the Indy 500 be like the dead center of the season rather than you know kind of tipping at the beginning. You know what I mean? Well, at least they don't do like another series does in their first race of the year is the biggest one they got. Yeah, yeah. That's what, true. I, what I would like to see is, and I don't know, I'm sure you've been to Richmond. You didn't drive there, but mm. 
that place is spectacular. That And the people loved it. As we were there, I was there every race they had, and I was with Mark Jaynes up by turn three. And the last race we were there, I told Mark, you know, if this keeps up, because they were coming around, the crowd was building. And, and we'd go out and talk to people, and they'd say, gee, are these cars fast? Really? Yeah. You noticed that, did you? It's faster than the stock cars that run around? Oh, yeah. Lord. It was catching on off, so it was gone. Why they're not back, obviously there's a problem, but I don't know what it is, but I hope they go back there for sure. Yeah, I, I completely agree. I think short oval racing for sure for us would be just fantastic. That's a perfect example of a track that I think we would do well at. Uh, I mean, even the Milwaukee Mile, I think, would have been a great track, obviously. Um, they, I mean, consider multiple different short tracks. But I, I also think, I mean, mile and a halfs. I mean, we can't be afraid of those anymore. We've got a safe car. And, like, I just hate the fact that they get such a bad rep from certain people. And I guess I, I assume certain drivers. Um, but we need to be back there. I mean, I, the, the only thing that is, is super exciting to watch, I think, from like the mid-2000s, early 2000s, are those oval races. Mile and a half oval races are just awesome. I wish we could go to Michigan. I wish we could go to Fontana, even though it's gone now. <laughs> but, yeah. you know, there's a lot of cool stuff that I just think part of what is so exciting about IndyCar is the fact that we are really probably the fastest, you know, racing series in North America, for sure. And when you talk about our speeds... Compared to Formula One, like, you know, obviously Formula One doesn't do ovals, but like our racing on oval tracks is without a doubt faster than anything else in the world. So that's, you know, that's pretty cool. And we need to be, I, I think, I think we could be taking advantage of that more. But also, I don't get paid to make decisions for a large racing series, and I'm probably not qualified to do so. Well, the thing I found interesting is <clears throat> when uh, Romain Grosjean did his first test in, in Birmingham, and he spun the car, and I think in first or second lap. And they pulled him in and said, what was that? He said, I just realized Formula One, all you do is steer the car. they got tremendous downforce and they got traction control. IndyCar doesn't have that. And he said, I wasn't aware of it. All of a sudden, whoop, now I know. Yeah, I mean, Formula One doesn't have traction control either, but they, but they definitely have everything sorted out at a pretty high level. And even IndyCar has a, a version of yeah. traction uh, limitation, you would say, or, or a, a system of both engine manufacturers realize how they can help us accelerate. <laughs> well, but it's just different. It's a wildly different car. And certainly physically, you drive the car way different, which I think is, is probably the main, you know, the main comparison between Formula One. But he's done a great job in being a great ambassador for our series, for sure. Well, I, I don't want to you know, embarrass you, but I think one of your traits is you are approachable. <laughs> fans can approach you, uh, and uh, except when you're putting your hat on, it's not a good time to talk to you, but you're approachable and so forth, and I think that's huge. And, and most of the drivers are, for the most part. Uh, if you want to talk to them, as long as they're not in the middle of something, they will do that, and I think that's something that's different than most any other sport. Even when uh, NASCAR was here, you couldn't get in. I had to pass to get into the garage, but you know they won't talk to you. They won't yeah. go their way, whereas... You and IndyCar drivers are available for pictures and for a chat or a shake the hand or something. And I think that's important. I think that's what's helping build the series. People are finding, oh, we can talk to them. Well, I agree. And I, and I think right now in our current generation of, um, you know, we see things like television programs that are helping Formula One. The Netflix show for Formula One elevated Formula One to a, a level in America that is, I've never seen before. It's astounding how many people think they're F1 fans now, which they are. <laughs> because F1 was presented to them in an incredible manner. And like I think if we had something like that for IndyCar to show uh, not only how, you know, how great our fan base is, but our the community, but also how competitive we are, even though are we you know, cordial to each other, potentially off track? Yeah, for sure. But I, I think there's a, a whole different level. Even NASCAR has stuff. MotoGP now has a TV show. Uh, the PGA Tour has a TV show. Everything, everyone is getting these TV shows or streaming, streaming programs that are behind the scenes. And that's something that we've been fighting for massively in IndyCar right now because I think we've got a great product to showcase. And we see it if you go to the track and like you see it if you go to the track. And we need more people who just happen to flip on their Apple TV or whatever it is and say, oh, what a, this looks cool. We need to learn about this. And suddenly... You know, even the F1 show even brought more attention to IndyCar because we got Grosjean over and we got a couple guys that, you know, came over to do F1s or IndyCar. So 
that's a whole different conversation. But uh, but I, I, it's something that I I agree with you. Our community is great, and the drivers are definitely approachable. But people need to know that. Right. You know I, mean? I, I agree. New and people I, need to know that. But I think also uh, I see uh, IndyCar just signed a new deal to cover uh, IndyCar down in Brazil. Mm. It's a two or three year program, and of course with. Grosjean and, and Marcus and guys that have come here from Europe, the European audience is growing to watch them. They bring their fans, and their fans are saying, hey, you got to come and see these guys. And I think, you know, the viewership is, is climbing rather rapidly, and the people in the stands, I think, is growing as well. And, of course, there must be something to it because the cars are starting to grow, the number of cars coming in. Well, exactly, and that's a great, you know, it's a great sign because if there's more cars on the grid, there's more money coming in, which— right. Money is power, and, <laughs> and, and money fuels all motorsports. So as long as that's coming in and we get more and more cars, uh, and it's not going the opposite way we, where we get down to like a 17, 18-car grid back in the champ car days, the end of champ car, um, you know, I think that's, that's, that's super exciting. We got a lot of international attention. You got Jimmy Johnson full-time, Grosjean full-time. I mean, those two, I, I do obviously think they get probably a little bit more of the attention sometimes than others, which is a slightly a shame because I think there's a lot of other people that deserve a little bit more attention as well, but they are the big names. And sadly, you know, you don't go to a, like a lot of people will go to a movie because they see Brad Pitt in the movie or, or Tom Hanks or whatever it is. You know what I mean? And a lot of people might watch IndyCar because they want to see Grosjean, but they might get to inter, be, you know, be introduced to a lot of new, new faces that they didn't know either. So um, it's great that we have those guys. I think we still need to do a great job in uh, showing the entire series. Um, but, uh, but yeah, we're in a great position right now. And obviously a lot of network races on NBC this year, but we just need people to know that it's on and we got to be able to hopefully Roger and, and the team there can make sure that these first few races all on network NBC leading up to the 500 build this huge momentum, um, for basically Indy, our Super Bowl which obviously everything looks like it's now going to be normal events. We're going to have full crowds and concerts and all this good stuff, thankfully, which is awesome. But we need to make sure that people know that that's happening. And then after the 500, it's like, hey, let's keep watching this. You know what I mean? And I think, uh, you know, the, the other good part about growing and the sad part to some degree is there's some very, very good drivers coming out of Indy Lights. Now, Dave Malukas has got a ride with uh, Dale Coyne, I believe. And there's some guys that need a seat, and now they got to get the seats. And I think things are growing to the point where it can happen. Well, I think the good thing about Indy Lights, hopefully, is I, I don't know if you remember back in the day, but there were a lot of good drivers that actually spent multiple years in Indy Lights because right. of the reason that there wasn't really many <laughs> seats in IndyCar. So, you know, we could, I, I would love to see that again to where it's like, hey, guess what? Like, we see Matt Brabham going back to compete in Indy Lights. Right. I think that's great. I think he's a very, very talented driver. Um, that probably deserved a proper shot at IndyCar, but sometimes these things don't happen. And there wasn't enough funding at the time. There wasn't anything going on that, that provided the right opportunity for him. But now he's with a great team in Indy Lights. There's a great group of drivers there. Um, and obviously we see Kyle Kirkwood. I think, is, I think Kyle Kirkwood is very, very talented. Yep. I think, uh, you know, I, I really, really hope the best for him at Foyt because I, I do like Larry Foyt. And I think them with a young American successful driver in the 14 car for sure is really cool. Um, so yeah, it, it's, it's, it's a great field. I, I wish there was 20 Indy Lights cars, obviously, but these things take time and, uh, hopefully that can, you know, that can happen eventually. Well, I'm sure with Roger behind it now that he'll, he'll push to get it. He had talked about when he took it over, encouraging IndyCar teams to have a lights team. So if he has a little, little push, I think. So the ones that can afford it or fund it will certainly will do it. So it's looking good. You know, I think it's what you've accomplished and the effort you put in to get Bitnile as a sponsor for a two-year deal. Will you be making appearances for them at various gatherings that they have? Will you be speaking for them? Yeah, I mean, they have a lot that they want to do. Todd Alt, our guy, he has his own uh, YouTube show as well that he's going to do, um, you know, I think at a few different races. Uh, there, there's a lot of stuff going on. They've got, you know, the, the Bitcoin uh, we actually Ed and I and Renus, we all did the uh, Bitcoin conference or Bitcoin something like a big trade show down in Miami right after the Indy 500 last year. Uh, so we're, we'll do stuff like that for sure with them. We'll do a lot of different social content. They're big on the social media side. They're big on the internet. Um, they try to dominate. You know what's what's going on. And I mean, 
you know, they're on the, you know, they're, they're a part, you, you can invest in Nile yourself. I mean, I'm not a financial advisor, obviously, but Nile on, on the stock market, you know, you can pay attention to what they're doing, see how the, how the company is doing. Um, and it's, you know, it's, it's a great, great group of people. I, I, I enjoy it because they truly are loving the, to be involved already. And we haven't even got to the racetrack yet. You know, we, we test in Sebring February 15th. They're going to come down and check it out and do some stuff around that. Um, but you know, they, they already love that they're involved and they haven't even, you know, got to the racetrack yet. They, they want to have die cast cars. You know, we want to have, we want to try and get an onboard camera at the Indy 500, obviously, which are very, very hard to get annoyingly. Um, but, uh, they want to do it all, which is, this is the dream sponsor that you, w- you would want to have, because if the activation budget is right, that means I can do more social content. That can mean, that means I can get more and more people involved. That means I can do things better to help my fan base stay engaged, to get better merchandise out there, to get a really cool a range of, of everything that you've always dreamed of because it's a true full-time, you know, partner, which is huge. Well, I think, <clears throat> and the, the fans that will come live to an event are people that they're looking for. And uh, I assume they'll be doing something to get their attention and get people's attention to stop by and see what they have and get involved, which is the whole idea in the first place. Exactly. Get your name out, get your brand out so people know who you are. Exactly. I mean, we're going to, we're going to create a lot of cool stuff to, you know, a lot of it's educating people on, you know, what Bitcoin is. How do you, how do you get involved? How do you, uh, you know, how can you comprehend it at the, at the right level? Um, and, and I mean, Ed and I are both learning that, but it's, it's very exciting. It's something that I think is, it's a great community, honestly, really supportive. The Bitcoin community are actually a very supportive group of people, which is, which is really cool. Well, in my opinion, and I'm sure with thousands of others, they picked the right guy. Because you're somebody <laughs> that can it. talk to people, and people can talk to you. And hopefully, going back to the part where they need a program, or IndyCar needs a program to inter- you know, interview the drivers. And I, I would hope that PR guys and gals will get their driver in front of the cameras at the race so people know who they are. And I yeah. agree with you. I think that people, once they, the people that I brought in and introduced the driver said, yeah. They're really easy to talk to. I said, yeah, but tell your friends. Yeah, that's true. We, I mean, there's, there's a lot to be discovered still about our paddock and, and, and who we are as, as drivers, competitors. I think there's a lot of work the drivers still need to do as well on, uh, on getting themselves out there, getting themselves, um, you know, uh, it, it, getting themselves out to the people at a level to where I know them, you know what I mean? Cause like I know these drivers at a different level than a lot of people do, you know what I mean? Because I'm, you know, for, these are my friends. So, uh, and I think people would enjoy knowing what that, what, what these guys are doing more so in their personal lives as well as, you know, as well as at the racetrack. Well, for the most part, they're, they're available. Like you say, we got to get their, them in front of a camera, in front of a microphone or in front of the fans and get to know who they are because they're great people. When formula one was in town, I could get, I got a credential to get in. But you couldn't talk to any drivers. Yeah. They're all in hiding somewhere. No chance, yeah. <laughs> and it, it just didn't work. And when we got the day to tour in front of the garages, there was no driver around to you know, sign autographs for people that wanted them. Oh, yeah. It, it, but IndyCar is open. It can be done. And I think uh, it needs to be brought to everybody's attention that these guys are good guys. They, they all get along pretty much. Uh, you, you and... Uh, the sad part about that argument, though, is is we actually kind of do need to get to that superstar level again, though, to where we need to stay away from people because there's so many. You know what I mean? That that would be as nice as we are. We kind of do need to get back to that level to where it's like if we walk outside, we're going to be out there for a long time. You know what I mean? So I, I understand what you mean for sure. And I think no matter what, it'll it'll not change for us. I think everyone in this paddock currently are always going to be kind to talk to. But uh if you if we were superstars like Formula One drivers, then uh, you know that would be great for us as a series. <laughs> On the other hand, the biggest name in drag racing is John Force. Yeah, he always comes out, signs for the fans, poses all every race. He'll come out. I don't know how many times, but he'll come out, sign for a half an hour, and he'll go back and do whatever he does, come back out again. So I think it can happen, and uh, I, I think it's something that needs to be done because people need to know who you guys are. Oh, for sure. What kind of people you are, and uh, it'll help. I agree. I agree. Well, I can do nothing but wish you nothing but the best. I'm going to go to a couple of the races this year, so I'll be hanging around. You'll see me peeking over somebody as taller than I am, see what's going <laughs> Good. on. Good. 
good luck to you in the coming Thank season you. for the next two years, actually. And uh, thanks for taking the time. I know you've been busy putting this program together. I appreciate you taking the time to come in here. No problem at all. Thank you. As Enjoy usual. very much. Keep an eye on him. Car 20, he was going to be there. Connor Daly. We'll be back with more guests in the upcoming uh, days and weeks, so stay with us. Until the next time, Don Kay saying thanks for watching. We'll see you again.